Hello, everyone. How's it going? A lot of things going on in the gaming world, I guess. Especially if you're a Fortnite fan. But uh, welcome to Brad's Bad Show About Games. My name is Brad, and I am not a new Bernie Sanders meme. And boy, that's that's kind of that took off the last few days. Oh boy. I've seen some good ones and I've seen some bad ones. I've also seen people really upset about it for some reason, and which makes no sense whatsoever. I will just say, if you're trying to force another meme into existence of some other completely unrelated person, like, like if you literally are trying to force a revenge meme into existence just because you don't like the person who became a meme, like that's just weird. Sorry, just as weird. Anyway, let's get into the the topics because we got a lot of Fortnite to talk about actually. A uh, little bit of guessing going as well. Uh the last in the last show they had already started teasing the arrival of the secret skin of the battle pass. Um that turned out as a lot of people predicted was the predator. And he is now a a boss in the stealthy stronghold area of the map. He actually uh, was a bit of a challenge to find. Uh, the day that he was added to the game, um, trying to get into Stealthy Stronghold and make it 10 seconds into a match without getting killed was a sh sh insane. Um, I mean, that was crazy. I tried a few times to drop in, try to get some guns real quick, but when you got like a quarter of the entire you know, uh, when you got a quarter of everybody in the map trying to get into this one area at the same time, it's not going to happen. Ten seconds in is about the best you can do unless you're like a really good player, which I am not. <laughs> so, you know, luckily though, the, um, uh, the challenge to get, actually get the skin was to defeat the Predator in the Stronghold, of course, beat the boss. Uh, but it was a, you could do that in squads. So, I tried it a few times by myself. Was gonna record a video of it like I did with Wolverine in the previous season. And, um, it just wasn't working. I could barely get in. I think I saw the, I actually was able to find the Predator boss, like, once... And then he ran away. I wasn't able to get him. But um, I I went in. I went in to squads. Let it fill out some. Uh, let it fill me out for three partners. We all four, I think, except maybe one. I can't remember exactly how it went down. But either three of us or all four of us went into the stronghold together to try to get this thing. Uh. I think I was the second person of our squad to go down. And I was just crawling around. I think at that point, like, I had, like, now I was just the re uh, reboot card. Hope I, I figured that the, the last guy on this team wasn't going to come find us. But, um... It came down to where it was only one other person in the squad. And they actually managed to take out the Predator. And... When when the uh, the missions allow for squad uh, participation, everybody involved gets the reward. So I was able to get the predator skin, even though I was dead in the game. So, and like almost immediately after, uh, our partner had gotten you know had managed to beat the predator. Somebody took him out. So, thankfully, I was able to get that very quickly. And I already have a video for the Predator skin made. I've gotten videos now for uh, YouTube made of all the Battle Pass skins. I don't, I don't think they've all been uploaded yet, but um, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm kind of backed up on skin videos right now, trying to get caught back up. Um, uh, but yeah, um, quality-wise. I was expecting the Predator to look a little, a little bit different. I don't know. I guess maybe it's just from some of the images I've seen where I was, you know, looking around trying to find out more. Because I've never seen the Predator films. It just never really interested me. 
Like I kind of like the the character concept, and I do think like it, like his helmet looks cool overall, like pretty good design. But from what I remember seeing online, I expected him to be like covered in like body armor. But this guy only has like uh, this the predator skin in the game is only he only has like a little bit of body armor. It's like they're trying. It's like a uh, and maybe this is the point. It's sort of like a mixture. Of like trying to go like is this high tech, this person like the the predator has like high tech you know armor and a helmet and devices that help him in a way or help them in a way to be better hunters, but they're also kind of primitive in that you know they don't really wear a lot of body armor. A lot of their like actual like flesh is exposed. It's kind of like it's kind of like anime armor logic, but uh. It's not a bad design. It's just not what I was expecting. It's not quite as good as I wanted because I think a full body, you know, full armor would look cooler. But I haven't seen these, so I don't know. This may be exactly what the Predator should look like. But overall, I still think it's a cool skin. I think it's cool that we got another boss, you know, in the game besides just the Mandalorian. And then, what's his face? Uh, Ruckus over at the... uh at the power plant or whatever it's called. Um, so yeah, fun. Predator's in there. I got all the, was able to get the uh, other rewards for it right away. And now he's a boss. But it wasn't long after that that we had our next set of bounty hunters coming into the game. Apparently a very big moment for Fortnite. A double skin pack featuring Sarah Connor and the T-800 Terminator. So, people began theorizing that one of the recently added shotguns to the game, that because it is the exact same shotgun used by the Terminator in the first, I think it's the first uh, Terminator film, or maybe the second one, uh, that the Terminator was probably going to come. And then, when they added... Uh, when they added the uh, the fourth uh, rift portal that shows up over by, I think it's Steamy Stacks, the image inside the portal is from a laboratory that is directly referencing the Terminator. So everybody's like, yep, it's going to be Terminator. And then suddenly we get this. Um, I honestly, I was expecting Arnold, to be honest. But... I kind of understand why they chose not to attempt to license Arnold's likeness. It probably would be very, very expensive to uh, license the likeness of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I, I get it. So you go with the cool skeleton robot figure instead. I mean, it's not bad. Actually, and, like, and see, I'm not really super familiar with these either. Because I haven't watched the Terminator films. I mean, I'm un- I'm uncultured, I know. But, um... Honestly, the skins look good. Uh, I honestly don't know which one I would rank over. Because as far as, like, a sci-tech, you know... Uh, a sci-fi, you know, high-tech robot thing, he's kind of cool. But I also like the Sarah Connor skin with her tactical gear and... She wears her harvesting tool on her belt. It's actually built into the skin, and if you pull out the harvesting tool, it unsheaths it. So it's sort of like the some of the sword back blings uh, that some skins have, like blade. And I think is skies like that. I can't remember. Oh, I know uh, Condor from the the current battle pass. Uh, his swords are like that. His swords sit in his backpack, and when you pull them out, you know. They actually leave the backpack. So I like when they do stuff like that where the the harvesting tools um, are visible on the skin when they're not in use and then they or you can unsheath it. Stuff like that. And like the and like it's it's not quite well it is it's more or less the same idea for the like the Captain America uh uh Captain America's uh shield. Yeah, stuff like that is really, really cool. And I do wish they would... I wish they could go back and, like, redo Deadpool's katanas. I know I've talked about this before. I do wish they could go back and fix that and make his katanas a harvesting tool. But, uh... 
too late for that, I guess. Um, but anyway, this is a good set. Apparently, there was some sort of price mix-up, and I tried to figure out. Like, it was very, it was worded very confusingly, and I'm not really sure. It was something to do with either buying the skin, like buying the Sarah Connor skin by itself, and then buying the bundle resulted in like a change of price value or something or maybe buying the bundle before buying the skin the the Sarah Connor skin uh beforehand uh charged you too much I can't remember which one it is because it seemed to be confusing to a lot of people but apparently whoever's whoever was charged more than they should have been will get a refund at some point or not a refund but they'll give you back the difference that it should have been so I'm not sure which crowd it was, because I bought the bundle. I actually thought that having, like, getting two skins, it was like 2,800 V-Bucks was the price for both of them. I thought that was too good of a deal to pass up, even though I'm not super familiar with these. But at least I know who the Terminator is. Uh, that said, I kind of feel bad now, because I've bought all the uh, Bounty Hunter skins that they came out with, except for the Walking Dead ones. And I mean... I at least am aware of the Predator. I mean, I'm aware of Walking Dead, but I've just been so indifferent to Walking Dead. I'm just like, uh, I don't care. But I, I kind of feel bad about skipping Michonne and Dick and uh, Daryl Dixon. I, I may, I assume they'll bring them back at the end of the season to let everybody have one last chance to get them. If I do, uh, get. If they do do that, hopefully I'll have some the, enough V bucks to pick those skins up too, because I would really like be bummed out if I, I, I it would it would make me dis it would I would be disappointed in myself if I if I leave out like one set, but um, hey, they're in the game. It's cool. Uh, speaking of bounty hunters, before I move on to the last bit of Fortnite stuff, because this happened yesterday, today's the 25th, this happened all uh, yesterday morning, um, counting up the bounty hunters right now, we should have four more bounty hunters coming into the game that we know of, and what do I mean by that? I mean, if, if you remember back at the beginning of the season, certain people within the community got a special package from Epic and it was Agent Jones's bag and it was filled with stuff that were meant to convince or entice or to bribe bounty hunters to come into the uh, come to the island to help Jones with his mission and it also came with a big checklist which it was the checklist was just the items in the bag but um right off the bat I think it was six of them were crossed out to begin with and if you go look it's all like things like one of the clues I've, I've talked about this before one of the clues was peanut butter cup and that was obviously a reference to Reese because of the name uh, I think syrup was one and that was obviously reference to man cake and like helmet I think was a reference to menace because he's got various t styles of helmets so on that list there's a grand total of 18 items so if you take all of that and you do the math, we're left with four more bounty hunters to be revealed in the next month and a half. So who all do we got so far? Well, there's eight skins in the battle pass, so if, which would you know include the six original characters, the Mandalorian, and the Predator. Then we were uh, then almost immediately as the season began, I think we got Kratos in the game. And immediately after that, at the Game Awards, they revealed Master Chief and the Walking Dead combo. So, that's eight skins starting off for the Battle Pass. Four added right there, that's 12. Now, we haven't had any Bounty Hunters join the game since uh, since we've done the whole... Because um, it, it, we're, we're at the end of January now. It has actually hasn't been that long since Operation Snowdown ended. It's been a few weeks, but not many. Uh, so they've kind of put the Bounty Hunter stuff on hold to, to deal with the holidays. And we haven't gotten really any new Bounty Hunters since then until t the, the Terminator set. So that takes us from 8 to 12 
Now add 2 to that, that's 14. So now we're left with uh, 4 left to get to 18. Uh, who will they be? Don't know. I'm not exactly sure. Like, I haven't seen any updated list from anybody where uh, any more of the clues have been crossed off. A lot of it is just pure speculation. But uh, we've only got about a month and a half left of this season. And I, I think things are, are going to get interesting. And I'm wondering how this will all play storyline-wise. Because, of course, these are all collaborations. But the way they treat these collaborations is they are part of the story. So we'll see. Anyway, moving on now to the final bit of Fortnite stuff is yesterday, we got a lot of teases for the, uh, something. Something was coming. A An individual hacked the Fortnite Twitter account. And I'm going to use air quotes, hacked. Because uh, they weren't really hacked. It's just it's a gimmick to sell the thing. But um, the Fortnite icon, their avatar for Twitter was changed. And their uh, the Twitter header was changed to a fox emblem. And images of the, uh, I think it's a, the, I think they're called the Drift. And then some other skin associated with this particular fox clan that they were talking about. And essentially, it's it's a warning of a forecoming evil, something old, something dangerous, is hunting, I guess, the character known as Drift. And the post-war Drift that whoever gave him the fox mask made him a target. At least that's the implication, it seems to be. Because the, 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 the tweets that went out look like somebody trying to get a hold of Drift. I'm assuming maybe this was John Jones hacking into the real world to find this guy. I don't know. A lot of this time travel and multiverse stuff is kind of confusing, but whatever. Anyway, long story short, there was a big call out for somebody to come help. It says like we need to unite or they'll destroy us all. And they said, we got to wipe our, I need to wipe, uh, I need to cover my tracks and need to wipe out, you know, all signs that I was here. So all those tweets that went out yesterday and were up for a few hours were deleted. Fortnite regained control of their Twitter account and changed their icons and header back to what they had been. And that was it. Now, most people automatically assume this is going to be, now judging from this, is it, people have a, well, people jumped and said this must be the new crew member thing because yesterday was exactly a week until they were supposed to reveal it. Uh, anybody in the crew gets the skin on the 31st. So a week from the 31st would be the perfect time to reveal it. Instead, this was just the, the uh, just a tease. Um, which kind of took everybody by surprise because nobody was expecting this because it was a long list of stuff and it was trending drift was trending i think on twitter uh when that happened fortnite became a big thing because people were really excited about it but um it does seem very strange that they put a lot of hype into this new skin uh for the fortnite crew we had we didn't get that with galaxia or green arrow there was really no hype other than this is the exclusive skin for the members now it seems like there's some lore involved here. And I'm actually really excited about that. But anyway, we finally got that today. Today, the 25th, we finally got the reveal of what the next crew pack is going to be. And it is a character named Vi. I think V or Vi. I would assume it's Vi. Uh, wearing the fox hood. Very similar to Drift. And what's the other character? I think it's Catalyst, I think, is the other character. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, she, I think she's the last of them, last of the Fox clan, whatever that supposed to be. This looks like a pretty interesting skin. The blue variant, I'm not, I, I, I want to see these in game before I really comment on them. But as far as the, like the designs looking at them, they look pretty cool. Uh, now in the first, uh, pack, the first crew pack, crew members, uh, thing we got in December, Galaxia, you got a skin, a uh, 
Hold on. You get a skin, a back bling, and a harvesting tool. And the skin had two different versions. And you get your uh, thousand V-Bucks. Okay. No glider, no wrap, no contrail, nothing like that. No loading screen, anything. The second crew pack was green arrow, one style of green arrow, an arrow harvesting tool with the boxing glove on it, and the arrow back bling. Of course, the the, the thousand bucks, uh, thousand V bucks that you get. I would have raked. Uh, I would have ranked. I mean, raked. <laughs> I would have ranked. Uh, Galaxia over Green Arrow. This I'm going to give more. I'm going to put as the now the top uh, level. Although I do really, I do think that the Galaxia skin is a pretty good skin. Although I like this one now. We actually have some lore, and she's sort of, I assume, will be somewhat important to the story. I hope. Um, she will come with a skin variant. So that's two versions of the skin: a back bling, a harvesting tool. A wrap, a thousand V bucks, and a loading screen. That's a lot, and I like that. That feels much like a much better deal, you know. Like to me, the subscription service, like the the, the exclusive skins, are cool to have, and you can only get them that way. And they did give crew members a free emote, uh, a free emote. Uh, but. I did feel like the first two sets were kind of like bare bones. Like I think it's still a good deal, like $12 uh, a month and you get a thousand V bucks and then you get a skin and at least a harvesting tool and a back bling. But this month will have a lot of stuff in it and it's the same price. So this is a much better deal. You get a lot more with it and it's the same price. So good. And and we could be wrong, maybe we're assuming a little too much, but there could be some lore involved here, and I know people have been really wanting that. But yeah, uh, Vi, really cool looking skin, as far as I'm, I'm concerned. I would rank this set as a whole above the other two. I'm, I, I, right now I'm not really sure, I kind of do, I, I don't know. Like, I do think Galaxia is a good skin, but the more I look at this one, the more I'm kind of like, I don't know, just, there's a lot going on for this skin, for Vi. So, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I, I do like it, though. It's definitely good. So, we'll just have to see what comes of that. It's only, uh, today is now Monday. Ever uh, We'll get the skin on Sunday. We'll see what it looks like in-game. And see if they actually do decide if, if this character is or is not important. And I wonder if this counts towards the bounty hunters, because apparently this person is being hunted by somebody. Now, people were making connections to the uh, to the uh, marauders who were dropping in randomly in Season 3 of this chapter, because the, air, the masks they wore were somewhat fox-shaped, too. Now, remember, they would rift into the island randomly, and there was no real explanation for who they were or where they came from. They would just show up, roam the map, they would go anywhere, follow you anywhere, and it was it was they were really unpredict uh, unpredictable. So we'll see if that happens. We'll see if the marauders actually, you know, come back and what they represent, because I'm sure they have some sort of plan for some of these things, but um, or they've left things open so that they can come back to them later. For whatever reason. Even if they don't have a set plan at this moment. Anyway, that'll be fun. Uh, so that's it for Fortnite talk. That I can think of. Uh, there's a game I kind of want to check out. I want to just pr plug it because it looks really fun. And it's funny because I got this from a Donkey video. Donkey recently uh, dropped his top games of 2020. And this was the first game he mentioned. Uh, Heroes of the Storm. It actually looks like a lot of fun. Now, it's a crossover game, is from what I understand. It's basically like a bare-bones version of League of Legends, where, according to what Dunkey said, instead of like playing like a 50-minute round, you could go in and play this game, like in like World of Warcraft or 
not World of Warcraft, uh, League of Legends, you can go in, like that, those games would take like 50 minutes, like they're really, really long. This game, the average uh, round of, of gameplay might last 12 to 20 minutes, which is about what like Fortnite could go if you, you know, are not eliminated right off the bat. So that, that could be fun to play. I might have to check that out at some point. Uh, from what I've seen, the characters are largely like crossovers from World of Warcraft, uh, Diablo, and Overwatch. Uh, could be fun. But I just thought I would uh, throw that out there. Uh, the way Dunkey described it uh, definitely seemed like a fun game to play. But uh, I think this is what Pokemon Unite is supposed to be, sort of, again, in like a... Um, oh god, what is it? A MOBA, I think, is what they refer to them as. I don't... A battle arena style game, I guess that's what they're supposed to be. I don't really know. I've never really played a game like that before. But, um, I might would check this one out because it actually does look like it could be fun. And maybe simple enough that somebody like me could just jump in and have fun with it. And, uh, but anyway, just wanted to throw that out, uh, throw that out there for a little bit. Do go check out Dunkey's video. It's really funny. <laughs> um, anyway, one more piece of information to talk about, and this one's sort of more of a rant, and it's about somebody I normally wouldn't talk about on the show, but because of something they specifically said, I feel like, yeah, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, we will be discussing comments made recently by pro wrestling legend, the Undertaker about uh, well, this guy went on Joe Rogan's podcast as you would expect somebody like The Undertaker to do and I'm not necessarily going to harp on him for going on Joe Rogan's podcast because um, I don't think that in and of itself is bad because Rogan has had people on his podcast before that I actually think are good people pushing good causes. But he's also had people on his podcast that are bad people pushing bad causes. But um But anyway, I personally like just don't care about Joe Rogan. I just don't. Like I get like I get I get his appeal and everything. I get why people like him. I also get why people don't like him. So. I said this on Twitter. And if I said it on Twitter. I guess I should say it here. I kind of just feel like Joe Rogan's a meathead. It's weird. Like. It's weird because he'll say like the most. Woke. Freaking. Like. Super left thing. Ever. One day. And then turn around and say something like. Super right thing. The next, it's, 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 I, it's, I don't know. He doesn't seem to have like a set ideology, really. He just seems to just, I don't know. His opinion seems to just, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing. I just don't care about Joe Rogan, but I get, I get his appeal. And I also get why people don't like him. And I think that the people on both sides of that, and I hate, the, I hate, do that stuff anyway but um yeah but both sides stuff uh, god i hate saying it uh, but i don't really know any other better way to word it i i understand it i understand why he's got such a big following anyway long story short let's get back to undertaker undertaker said something to the effect of he he preferred working in wrestling in the era uh, he said, like, now he sees guys in the locker room, they're concerned with being pretty and making themselves look pretty while also playing video games in the locker room. He said, back in my day, men were men. You know, oh, you know, these crusty men, and they carried guns and knives in their bags. And I miss those days. And I get that Undertaker really is a relic of the past. And he really is. The guy's almost 60. But think about that for just a minute. He's complaining now 
that the that the wrestling era right now exists in a state where dudes are or they get along with each other better it seems generally they all seem to respect each other which is why they all play games together to kill time in between shows and a lot of them do use their platforms and their even their gaming platforms to uh, promote causes and stuff he'd rather live in the era where the dudes didn't trust each other and carried weapons in their bags just in case somebody in the locker room decided to show out. Like, what? Like, it's well known that, like, back in some of these older days, like, that some of these wrestlers despised each other. And that's not to say that, like, people don't work in the locker rooms in wrestling that don't uh, dislike each other now. But, I mean... They're talking about like people actually hated each other, hated each other's guts. Like, come on. Like, it's like the well-known story that like when Shawn Michaels was the WWE champion back in the day, like everybody hated him. But they all understood like at the time he was the biggest star on the show, so. He was the only, he was the guy to be their champion. But they all hated each other. They hated his guts. But um I just found I find that fascinating, man. Like why would you want to live like why would you want to why would you prefer to be in a locker room with people who are essentially prepared to have to potentially stab or shoot somebody? Versus a locker room where everybody sort of respects each other on some degree. Like, why? Men were men. I like that like Jason Solomon, uh, Solomonster, pointed out that nobody wore more eyeliner in wrestling at his peak than The Undertaker. So that's funny in terms of like complain- like being a hypocrite about... Like, oh, these guys got to pretty themselves up. I'm like, dude, you wore more makeup than pretty in, in all of them. And think about how often, like, these guys, like, uh, yeah, they. I mean, uh, wouldn't that also apply to people like The Rock, whose, like, entire, like, image? Like, yes, The Rock, like, like his personality and his looks, and he was, like, the Hollywood guy. Like, that was his gimmick. Like, I, I don't understand what what he's talking about. Like, Ric Flair's whole gimmick was that he was the nature boy. Like, you know, everybody wants to ride Space Mountain. I mean, that was his whole thing. So he had to be attractive to some degree. It was part of his gimmick. I mean, I don't know what he's talking about. Unless you want to assume he's talking about, uh, like, or hinting at potential, like, some of these guys aren't real men. Like, you could insinuate there what you want, but it's just so sad. This dude literally just retired, like, what, a month or two ago, maybe? I don't remember. And he's done everything he can to step on people's... Th- like, like, he's... I honestly feel like he's not that far from just burying the business. Like, yeah, it sucks without me. I'm like, eh. I, I don't get it. I mean, like, the worst thing in the world... And, uh... Jason also pointed out, like, yeah, yeah you want to know what happened? Uh, he's, uh, Jason pointed out, like, if video games had been popular when during his era, those guys would have been playing video games too. If cell phones and streaming were, were popular in the 90s during the Attitude Era, they would have been doing that stuff too. It's a different era. But I would argue this era is at least better in terms of, like, respect amongst people. 
I mean, come on. Like, uh, I think even Xavier Woods, Austin Creed said something about I'd rather uh, I'd rather be. He said he said something to the effect of I would rather be in a locker room playing video games than with dudes with bags filled with. And he he typed out redacted, which is of course. You know, that was clearly a reference to the knives and guns comment. Like, you don't need a gun. Like, if, if, you were, if you're in an environment where you need to, to, to have a gun on you at all times, then maybe that's not a good environment. Like, I, I can't really think of anything else to say. But I feel like I haven't said enough, like, because it's just such a stupid, oh, it's such a stupid, kind of like, ah, we were tough, the guys were tough in my day. I'm like, "Eh, shut up. I mean, we could also go into, like, uh, like a few people did about, uh, yeah, that era was so great. A lot of, all those manly men were so great that so many of them died before they hit 40. Or died in their 40s. What a great wrestling era. Just ridiculous. But anyway. I think uh, I think I was going to do it. Because if I if I go any longer, it's just going to be me repeating the same thing over and over again. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I guess we'll look forward to Fortnite stuff. And maybe soon we'll check out Heroes. And maybe The Undertaker won't make a bigger idiot out of himself. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you later.